In the middle of this ridiculous heat wave, I wanted to do a video on just that, heat. I've for a long time wondered whether or not turbo blankets actually work, and if they do work, are they really beneficial enough to justify the price? Let's dig in. It's important to note this video is in no way sponsored, paid for, suggested by any of the companies mentioned within it. We aren't going to be testing various turbo blankets, we're just going to be testing whether or not a turbo blanket works. So in this case, we are going to be using the PTP turbo blanket. This is their one that's made out of both some form of volcanic rock that they use as part of their marketing material, as well as I'm assuming uh, fiberglass and definitely steel uh, weave, which is <laughs> pretty cool weave. For those of you who aren't as familiar with turbo blankets, the concept, or at least the claim, is two parts. One is that it's a blanket. It's a little snuggie that wraps around the exhaust part of your turbo and insulates it. The second claim is a little bit more interesting, but we'll get to that as we go to the results. The experiment. Using an infrared camera, we measured the temperatures with and without a turbo blanket. To control our environment, we did it on two separate days that had similar outside temperatures. This prevented latent heat or heat soak that could have modified the results from whatever the second test was. Our testing procedure was rather simple. We warmed the car up to operating temps, took pictures, and then went for some spirited, boosted street drives. We immediately took readings the moment the car was stopped back in my driveway, and then later to see or, or manage the effects of heat soak. Let's take a look at the results. They are drastically more noticeable than even I expected, and any question of why the paint on my hood has cracked and broken off was quickly answered by the temperature reading on the hood. My assumption, just looking at the hood, my assumption is that they didn't run a turbo blanket when they first painted the car. I know that it was driven to and from the paint booth, and I'm pretty sure the turbo had its hand on how the paint was cured. Well, it should be a commonly known fact that heat rises, that makes it no surprise that the hood absorbed more heat. But it was the smaller differences found underneath the hood that caused a little bit of alarm. Because infrared light still behaves like light in many ways, it can be difficult to measure the temperature on reflective surfaces. But I was still able to measure some of the temperatures on the surface of the intake manifold, and that was definitely a cause for alarm. On the intake manifold closest to the turbo, it had significantly raised the temperature. Now, more than how much it was raised is the fact that it raised it after the intake manifold temperature sensor and it did not raise the temperature evenly. So what you've got going on is one rotor, in my case, or in a piston engine, maybe one cylinder, getting a different air to fuel ratio because air expands and contracts with temperature than the other ones. And unless you have accommodated for that, that can either lean out or rich enough cylinder and cause some serious problems. Taking a look at all of these infrared pictures, you're going to notice a common theme with the actual engine block. It stays the same temperature no matter what, for a couple reasons. For those of you that are uh, mechanics or very familiar with engines, this will not surprise you that the coolant system maintained and regulated the temperature of the actual engine. So what you see is even though the turbo is still radiating more heat to it, I've got a properly sized radiator that was able to dissipate it quickly. Claim one. Turbo blankets reduce engine bay temperatures. This is absolutely confirmed. It is not inconsequential. Double negatives, it definitely matters. It is very substantial heat differences. I could go for the easy one and say my hood is clearly, clearly much colder with the turbo blanket on, and you see the, what happened to my paint. So if you like your paint, turbo blanket's for you. But more importantly, to the rubberized components that are around the turbo, those take less heat. Now, I am not a rubber uh, expert, <laughs> which I should be a rubber expert, but as a person who has worked with rubbers before, rubber tends to dry rot, and I am not a huge fan of holes in my rubber. So if you like keeping your engine bay components in good shape, and consequentially, like a big difference, not just the 18 years that you have child support, but in general, you definitely can keep your engine bay in much better shape. Claim two, turbo blankets improve performance. This is an interesting one because it's not what I expected. What I assumed was the turbo blanket keeps the heat in, that means lower intake temps, means more air going in. That's not it at all. When they're talking about more performance, they're actually looking at it from a thermodynamic standpoint. They're saying piston or rotary engines in this case are not efficient machines. 
they're as efficient as we humans can kind of make them, but the concept isn't. An internal combustion engine is about 30% efficient in terms of total energy available. Using conservation of energy, the other 60% of that energy is converted from gas, potential energy, into heat. Heat is a source of, or a form of, of energy being shown. There are two places that that heat goes. One is through the radiator and it's cooled off that way to the open air, and the other is out the exhaust. The more heat that you keep in that turbo, two things happen. One, an expansion of air is based off of the temperature. So the quicker you can get that air up to full temperature, or at least the more you preserve it at full temperature, the more it's gonna push that turbine blade. The other thing, which is also a minor factor, is the fact that metals expand and contract, and the metal inside of a turbo is no exception. The claim is, is that the blade and the housing get closer together and that it's more efficient because you're not letting air escape around it. Both of those claims are difficult for me to measure given what I've got, but I wanted to make it clear that that is certainly plausible and it makes sense from a physics standpoint because what you see here clearly makes sense that the energy or the heat is being contained inside of the turbo. But it could have been psychosomatic, it could have been just feeling good, it could have been just a cold pocket of air outside, but the turbo is supposed to boost sooner. You'll see very controlled studies where they control the intake temperatures, they control the ambient air on a dyno, everything's nice and consistent, and even then you'll see a minor improvement. Still an improvement, but I don't know if it would justify the cost of the turbo blank, but it is a benefit. And like I said, claim two is definitely plausible, we just don't have the technology or the equipment here to measure it for a YouTube video. So if you guys wanna see more of these videos that give at least some attention to the scientific method of measurement, please let me know. This sounds corny like everybody else, but this is something where if you like this, subscribe, like it, all those good things, because I, I wanna know if people enjoy learning as I do. This is me learning firsthand and sharing my knowledge with you. Coming up, because I guarantee at least one of you are asking, there's a nice little announcement coming up about the four rotor. I'm gonna be flying out to California We've got the core of the transmission making its grand appearance. Uh, when you spend 20 some grand on just the transmission block alone, it better make a pretty good appearance and it better command some attention. At least it's got my whole attention. <laughs> so that will certainly be the next video coming up. I can't tell you exactly when because custom parts are, need to be machined. Custom means tons of time, tons of money. But that's the near future. You're gonna continue seeing some videos with the three rotor that fills that void for both you and I of what comes next with the four rotor. So until then. <laughs> this is no joke, I thought this would be kind of funny, but the ceiling in the garage has risen 30 degrees just having the car in here. It went from 70 degrees to 105. <laughs>